Will you, will you get Come on, get off the wall. Get across. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Get off the wall. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get back across. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Get back Is it, Bill? It's Gus Hansen and Lester Mills. Gus Hansen is the rich uncle, isn't he? Yes, ma'am. Well, who's Lester Mills? Mrs. Hansen's brother. He's a millionaire, too. Hello, Mr. Hansen. Anything new? No, sir. Mr. Mills? Yes. Mr. Yes. You'd better wait. Nothing yet. Just waiting. All right. All right, boys, open up. What is it? Special delivery from Mr. Kurt Hansen. I'll take it. You wait here. You sign for it? Mm, give it to me. Special delivery for Mr. Kurt Hansen. I'll open it, Kurt. Thank you. Is it about Tom? Yes. He's safe and well. And they promise not to harm him if we comply with their demands. What do they want? $200,000 in unmarked five, ten, and twenty dollar bills. May I have that letter, Judge, please? Poor Tom. At least he's safe. And they won't do anything to him, will they, Kurt? Well, they can't. They can't. No, of course not. All they want is money. And where are we going to get it? Two hundred thousand dollars. Don't worry, dear. We'll manage somehow. Now, come on, boy. Pull yourself together, dear. Yes, I will. I know I can get twenty-five thousand, and I'm sure my wife can raise an additional twenty-five. Good. You can figure the other twenty for me. That's swell, Judge. I can't let you do this, none of you. I can't. I know our finances. You'll be ruined. What of it? Well, you'd do the same if it were one of ours, Kurt. Why, certainly. What's money at a time like this? Tom comes first if it takes every penny we have. Leave it to us, Kurt. Please. Better get in touch with our banks right away. Pardon me. It's all right, Chief. We've decided to pay the ransom money and comply with the kidnapper's demands. Mr. Hanson, yeah? I want you to meet Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed? Mr. Clifford. Yeah. Tom, government Tom. men from the Bureau of Investigation. Mr. Gus Hansen, an uncle of the kidnapped victim. Mr. Kurt Hansen, the father. Mr. Mills How and Judge do? Fry. How do you do, sir? They just arrived by plane. They were assigned to this case. Chief Haggerty has given us all the pertinent facts. And there's one suggestion I'd like to make. Yeah? That you let the Department of Justice furnish the ransom money. You mean Mark Bills? Yes. Why, that would knock the whole thing into a cocked hat. But it's of the utmost importance if we are to apprehend him. Apprehend nothing. We can't and won't jeopardize Tom in any regard. Well, Mr. Hanson, we're prepared to handle this in such a way that the kidnappers won't become suspicious until the victim is safely returned. I think we should follow instructions to the very letter or not at all. After we get Tom back, that's different. Then you can do as you wish. 
Yeah. But right now, we don't want any interference of any kind. Mr. Hanson, it is the code of the Bureau of Investigation to give the family every consideration. But after all, the ultimate apprehension of the kidnapper should not be completely disregarded. You'll have time for that after. I know, but... There are no buts at a time like this. What do we care whether you catch the crooks or not? They may be encouraged by success, and kidnapping will become a daily practice. What do you think, Judge? I can appreciate the government's viewpoint. Still, I... So can I. But we're not using any marked money, and that's final. Very well. Come on, Les, we got things to do. I know that you gentlemen will understand. Excuse me. Will you have every available detective at your office with me within an hour? Gladly. And notify the sheriff and every commanding state and county officer to be present. I'd like a conference as soon as possible. You can expect full cooperation from us. Thanks. I'd like to use the phone. Right there. I want to speak to Washington, D.C. Mr. J. Edgar Hoover at National 7117. And now, which way? Left or right? Doesn't make a bit of difference. I don't think either of them lead any place. You would insist on a shortcut. Mm -hmm. A shortcut to where? Madam, are you insinuating that I don't know where I'm going? <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, oh, moe, catch it. Silly. <laughs> Well, that makes it unanimous. Put out your hand, lady. We're going to the right. Yes, sir. Now, I'm positive we're on the wrong road. Even the car refuses to go. I knew I should have brought it out for it, Mower. the chimney. Well, we don't want to wait here till Christmas, do we, Trudy? We aren't afraid of that old thunder and lightning, are we, Trudy? We'll soon be in front of a big fire and Mother fix you some nice hot food. It'll be as snug as a bug in a rug.
Uh-uh. Ladies present. Hey, how about a fire? There's one already to light. Now that's what I call service. <laughs> well, let's have some of it. Here, take this thing off. It's a good thing my matches aren't wet. Everything else is. What's the date today? Mm, the 6th, I guess. Why? This is yesterday's paper. Well, I don't want it, dear. I read it. More spooks. You, is it? Come on out of there. What is it? Look. All these things are new. Hmm. Maybe we were expected. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's nothing to worry about. You get yourself comfortable now, and I'll go down to the car and get the rest of the things. on the door, too. Will you stop playing detective and get those things from the car? Okay, boss, I'm on the way. No. I can't figure it out. Place apparently hasn't been lived in in a long while, and yet all these new things are out. Do you think we dare touch any of it? Oh, well, I don't see why not. We can keep tab on what we use. In the morning, leave a nice note and a little money. <laughs> little is right. <laughs> Here, hold this. Mmm. Canned milk for Trudy. Now, this is pretty swell. And I didn't even have to climb down the chimney. Let's hope we don't have to get out that way.
Stand where you are. Put up your hand. You don't have to be afraid. We're not robbers. We just came in to get out of the rain. Keep them up. Don't monkey around. Let them have it. Keep your shirt on. Buzz, stay out here with the stuff. Hey, you, get up out of that hay. My wife and I were just driving through and we lost our way. The car stopped. Quiet. Listen. I haven't a gun if that's what you're looking Quiet. for. Quiet. We'll tell you when to talk. Back up there. got lost. Where is your car? Stuck, down the road away. I hope you'll forgive us. We took the liberty of using some of your canned goods. And you got a lot of crust. Oh, we were going to leave a dollar to pay for it. It wasn't so much for ourselves, but we did want something hot for the baby. Where are you from? Ohio, Toledo. What are you doing way out here? Joe was promised a job in San Diego. What do you do? Almost anything these days. I'm a machinist by trade, and I thought That's that enough. You can spend the night here. Take your mattress and put it in that room over there. Thanks a lot. Okay. And don't forget that kid. Take him, too. It's a little girl. Well, whatever it is. Hey, what's the idea? Throw him out now, they'll get suspicious. Let them stay and turn them loose in the morning, they won't know the difference. Yeah. That think we're swell guys and never get hip. Sure. Well, it's a sucker idea myself. If you take my advice, you'll give them the works. And make an orphan out of the kid? You can't do that. Oh, no? Hey, Buzz, get some coffee on. Gimp, come on, we get our stuff out of the room. Here's a light for you. Thanks. And if you want to drink a water or anything else, you better get it now. Because we got a little business to discuss and we wouldn't like to be disturbed. Well, we won't need anything, thanks. You won't have any trouble from us. You're telling me? Turn on the radio. Some sugar, huh? Got the magnifying glass? Hey, not so loud. You'll wake up the baby. Now, wouldn't that be just too bad? Leave it loud, but they can't hear won't hurt him. See anything? It's all right, not a mark on it. How about splitting it? Pitch, buzz, gimpy, no sir. Pitch, buzz, gimpy, no sir. Ladies and gentlemen, an announcement of national importance. Tom Hansen has been safely returned to his home. The ransom money was paid to the kidnappers this evening. A few hours later, Tom was turned loose on a country road near Grovesdale. The kidnappers have left absolutely no clue. Well, come kid. Cutting it off like that's bound to make them suspicious. Well... Well, nothing. Well, they don't have to guess who we are now. The handsome kidnappers. Let's don't take no chances. Up to now, everything's gone like clockwork. We ain't left a clue. Why, we ain't stubbed our toe even once. I don't see no reason for doing it now. Take it easy. Oh, they're safe in there, ain't they? They can't get away. I think Pitch is right. I'm forgiving it to them now. You've done enough thinking for a while. We can take care of them tomorrow morning. Right now, I want to get the sugar split. Turn that thing back on and act like nothing happened.
It's all my fault. If I hadn't been so stubborn about that shortcut. Don't worry about it, Dick. It's wonderful to know the Hanson boy's home and safe. I know just how his mother must have felt. Oh, you nasty man, making money on the easy plan. Here it's there, it's everywhere. Oh, you nasty man. It's everywhere. Oh, you nasty man. Imagine that giving us a jitter. <laughs> hey, that dizzy duck makes a lot of noise, don't he? <laughs> well, whatever he is. Keep your hat on, Buzz. Oh, wise guy, huh? Well, you don't have to worry. I'll get that seagull before we leave here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jim, get some hot coffee on. <laughs> uh, see what the monkey wants. Maybe he wants out of that cage. <laughs> morning. Good morning. Sleep all right? Oh, pretty well, thanks. That's nice. Good morning. We're all ready to leave now. Oh, yeah? Yes, we've got to get to town as soon as possible. The baby caught cold last night and she's got a fever. Well, that's too bad. Yeah, that's tough. Well, if you let me know what I owe, I'd be only... Oh, no, that's all back. right. Forget it. You don't owe us a thing. Not a cent. Oh, that's darn nice of you. I'll be back to get the rest of the bags. No, don't bother. Gimpy will help you. Gimp! Thanks a lot. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Wait a minute. You don't really think you're going anyplace, do you? You're staying right here, the both of you. I don't understand. Oh, you don't? <laughs> I expect you're going to tell us you don't know who we are. Well, you didn't introduce yourself. Huh. That monkey ain't as dumb as I thought he was. No. Go on, get back in there. But we've got to get to a doctor and get some medicine. Cut out that gab and get in there like he told you. Get moving. If your kid's really sick, we'll fix you up. One way or the other.
Imagine him thinking he was going. How about fixing something to eat? Maybe the kid is hungry. Oh, shut up. You're breaking my heart. Say, listen, I got an idea. Yeah? That money's not marked. At least I can't find anything wrong with it. But there's one guaranteed way of finding out. How? We'll send the kid into town and let him spend some. If it's no good, let him take the bump. That ain't such a hot idea. No? What's gonna keep him from not coming back? His wife and kids, stupid. Well, then what if he don't come back along? Why, well, some small town sheriff with a yen for glory would make a shooting gallery out of this dump. Well, I'll fix that. You say your car broke down? Yeah, the motor got wet or something. But it ought to start all right now. Well, that's fine. You're going to town. Thanks. With me. You can buy some medicine for the baby. Maybe I'll even let you bring back a doctor. Well, that'll be swell. Well, get ready. We're leaving right now. Give me some of that dough and mix it up. I'll be back in about three hours. Why so long? Well, Cosmo and the Grange are too close and too small. We've got a stock there, a couple of towns up that way. Take about an hour gone, an hour coming back, and... Well, I'll say about an hour covering the towns. It's 8 o'clock now. If I'm not back by 11, you know something's wrong. Hey, you ought to throw plenty of scare into him before you leave. Yeah, I know. Hey, you, come on out here. Tell your wife to come with you, too. Now, before we leave, let's get this straight. There's no use your putting on that innocent act any longer. You know we're the ones that snatched the handsome kid. Well, we thought... Well, we are. Now, I'm taking your husband to town for a reason. You're gonna try out some dough for us. You're gonna go in stores and spend it. I'll tell you what to buy. And if you try to cross me in any way... Well, you'd hate to come back and find your wife and kid gone, wouldn't you? Now, if you do what I say, everything will be all right. That clear? Yes, sir. And in case something causes you to forget, here's a sample. Oh! Oh! Don't! Don't! Oh! That's enough. I gotta use them. Joe! Joe, please do just what he tells you to. Come on. Remember, pitch, 11 o'clock's the deadline, see? All clear. Okay, let's go. I'm going to see if she don't want something to eat. I guess the kid is really sick. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going to give it some hot milk. You give it a slug of this whiskey, then it'll fix him up. It's a horror. I wouldn't give her gin.
you wait a minute, slug. You want to wake up the whole county? I ain't letting no eagle drive me nuts. Got me talking to myself now. figure out what he wants down there. I think he's hiding his money. Oh. We go to Stockdale first, and then Burton and Dover. Now we got ten deals here. You're getting rid of all of them. Here, you can pass the first one for the medicine. Now listen, don't try to be smart. Because I'll be watching you every minute. If you know what's good for you, you won't even let your hand shake as you pass it across the counter. Now get going. Have you got change for 20? Yes, I think I have. Thank you very much. Call again. I got to hand it to you, kid. You did all right. Now head for Burton. You got. It's wide open now. <laughs> That's one on us. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, seven. The guy makes more noise than the duck he's squawking in Throw a blanket over his head or something, will you? Gee, that'd smother it. No. Well, it didn't burn you, did it? Well, sure. Sure, up, me. Look up. Oh, 
Oh, oh <laughs> cut it out. Oh, the guy. <laughs> I told you to keep that breath quiet in there. Now do it. What time is it, Kim? Oh, take it easy, bitch. Wait. It ain't 11 yet. Well, let me know when it is. to Toby, do you? Oh, uh, no. He's too smart for them. Yeah, I know, but this guy's drunk. He's gone haywire. He'll kill them kids. What are you trying to do, kill us? Slow down. Well, it's getting late. I said slow down. I got a lot to live for. Yeah, Toby will be all burnt up when he get back. Yeah? Well, I now think he's coming back. What do you mean? I mean a lot of things. As soon as I take care of them, we're blowing. Go get the car. Oh, look, Pitch, we got a lot of time. What do I care? I don't like a dame in there anyway. She ain't doing nothing. Well, they're innocent people, ain't they? Yeah. Well, innocent people have got the best memories. They pick your picture out of the files like nothing. Now go get that car. I'll get a buzz. Never mind, you pack the things. Do what I told you. Where's the key? You had it. I think I hear a car coming. Wait a minute. Now give me that key. I ain't got it. Now, wait a minute. You're drunk, bitch. You don't know what you're doing. Give me that key. I'm drunk. Take the left-hand road. We're going to circle around in case someone's telling us. But it's almost 11 o'clock. Never mind. Do as I tell you. Bottle again, huh? You're getting a little ahead of yourself, ain't you? You want to gum everything up? Oh, I ain't gumming nothing up. You know what I said about drinking. I'll lay off. Sure. How'd you do with the dough, Toby? Yeah, how was it? Ah, uh, not a rumble. I passed every bill like that. Did you try to bank? Sure. I almost went to the post office <laughs> to buy some stamps for a laugh. <laughs> well, what do we do now? We got changed and packed. We're leaving as soon as it gets dark. Mr. 
Mr. Reed has some very important information for you. Please pay strict attention to what he has to say. Gentlemen, there is no need of my telling you that this is one of the most unusual cases to come under our jurisdiction. We have had none of the usual clues. The kidnappers displayed extraordinary strategy from the very onset. And I am convinced that this crime is not the work of a moron or crank, but of a mob of shrewd, experienced criminals, probably out on parole. <laughs> Fortunately, as you know, we were able to secure serially numbered and lettered bills which are now in the hands of the kidnappers. How we were able to substitute this specially prepared money for the original ransom money will, for the time being, remain an official secret. It is sufficient to say that our hope of cracking the case depends entirely upon this money. Obviously, they passed a few bills in Burton, Stockdale and Dover for the sole purpose of trying them out. But I don't think we shall find the kidnappers in those towns. Their headquarters are elsewhere. And there's no telling where they are by now. But this money is a sure, definite trail that will eventually send these kidnappers to the electric chair. Now, let me explain the money. It's very simple. You look at the bill. Remember, just a 5, 10, or 20. A letter always precedes the long serial number. If the letter on the bill is one of these five, L, M, N, O, P, you next look at the last numeral of the serial number. If it is five, seven, or nine, you have one of the ransom bills. Do you all understand? Yes, yes, sir. All right. Now go ahead. Report in the usual manner at regular hourly intervals. We are going to cover every city, town, and hamlet in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And if these kidnappers are not caught dead or alive, it will not be our fault. That's all, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> glad to cooperate. Good. Just broadcast this code at every opportunity. Hello, VE5CA. You're okay on the serial numbers, old man. Five, seven, and nine. But you've got the letters wrong. I'll give them to you again. L-M-N-O-P. But we don't need any card to remember, though. The employees have all received their instructions. Fine. See that one of these are placed in every cage. Seven. a nuisance, fellas, but the baby's much worse. She's very sick. See, we're busy. That was a little tomorrow. But we've got to get her to a doctor. Can I tell you not to annoy us? Please, Joe. We have another important bulletin on the Hanson kidnapping case. Between 9 and 10 o'clock this morning, 10 ransom bills were passed in Stockdale, Burden, and Dover. Government agents and state police have broadcast a full description of the man who passed the ransom bills. 
He was about 25 years old, dark, height about 5 feet 11, weighed about 155 pounds. And friends, here's the biggest bombshell. Contrary to public belief, each and every bill of the 200,000 is marked and easily identified. For you to identify one of these bills, you have only this to remember. The letter in front of the serial number and the last numeral. Here they are. If the letters are any one of these five, L, M, N, O, P, and the last numeral of the serial number is a five, a seven, or nine, you have one of the ransom bills. If you receive one of these bills, please notify one of the nearest authorities. Another bulletin later. Why, those dirty notebooks. Why, a school kid can remember them. Do you think they tailed you? Nah, they ain't here, are they? Not yet, they aren't. Yeah, if you ask me, I think we're all dead pigeons. And a pig's eye we are. Now, let's not lose our heads. Listen. Go on, get back in that room. Close it off. Uh, it's not as tough as it looks. No, it's tougher. All right, they caught up with us in these small burgs. Why shouldn't they? Everybody around these parts is kidnapped conscious, especially now. All we gotta do is stay here. Lay low for a while, even for a month if we gotta. Then we can pass all the dough we want. I bet they never even heard of the snatch in Tennessee or Indiana, places like that. Say, it's a pushover. We just sit tight and do nothing. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Sure. What do we do with them yahoos in there? Uh, I'm not worried about them. Well, I am. Hey, they got a description of that gee that fits him like a glove. Or even a blind man could put the finger on it. So far, we ain't killed anybody, and we ain't crossed the state line, have we? As a matter of fact, we've been clean about the whole business, so why get our hands dirty now if we don't have to? Sooner or later, you gotta do something. You can't lug them with you, and you can't leave them here, so what? I know what you'd like to do. You said it. And the sooner the better, that's what we ought to have done at the start. I'd hate to be in a spot with that monkey or a squaw talking to a smart DA. You'd get the hot seat without even a trial. <laughs> a trial wouldn't do you much good in our spot. You said it. Full up. If there's gonna be any killing around here, I'll say when. You say when, maybe when it's too late. If you think I'm gonna stick around here for a month with that kid squawking, you got another thing coming. Yeah, and I'm half nuts now listening to that wood chopping crow outside. Ah, oh, dry up. <laughs> I know your baby's sick. What are we gonna do about it? It's tough on all of us, but we gotta stay here. Even you're smart enough to know that. We won't talk, I promise. We'll make off as if we were never here and never saw you. Please. Ah, oh, teacher, let him go. Now, wouldn't that be swell for us? They got your description posted all over the state. They'd pick you up in a minute. You wouldn't talk. <laughs> After they got through with you, you'd talk all right. Well, if you won't let me go, then let my wife go. There must be a country doctor she could find who wouldn't be suspicious. Yeah, sure, there's a doctor. Lots of them. And G-men, too. Well, we've got to get Trudy to a doctor. We've got to. Don't waste your breath, Joe. No use appealing to them. They aren't men, they're beasts. And all I have to say is that if I ever get out of here, I'll not only talk, I'll shout. I'll yell from the housetops. I'll tell everyone who you are and what you are. I'll remember your faces as long as I live. I hope I'll have the satisfaction of seeing you hanged. Let me give a tour now. Go ahead. Kill me. But don't torture my baby. Get back in there. And don't pop off so much. Or you will get it sooner than you think.
Hey, hey, drop that button. Drop it. Come on, Archie, want some laughs? Come here, doggy. Nice doggy. I won't hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you put some salt on his tail? <laughs> <laughs> Pretend you're a tree. <laughs> He's getting pretty far away. Yeah. Get inside quick. I'll break his neck for that. What else could he do? Certainly doing your best to mess things up. You're so smart. You thought of everything, didn't you? The perfect crime. Not a hitch. Not a clue. <laughs> the mastermind. Well, I'm through taking orders from you. Could you have done any better? Never mind what I could have done. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, though. I'm blowing. Me too. Well, go on, go on, the whole bunch of you. What do I care? You don't have to get burned up. We're all in the same boat. No, I don't have to get burned up. All I have to do is put up the dough, buy the cars, hire the flats, take the grub, find this hideout. And now when things are getting tough, you're running out. Well, go on, I'm better off without you. We're going. Before we leave, how about cutting up that good 300 you got? Listen, what I got, I keep. You don't get a cent, none of you. I got no dough for heels. Go on, get out. Get going. You too. They're fighting among themselves. And don't think you're taking the car, because it's locked. We'll get a car, all right. Come on, hurry up, Kent. This joint's beginning to smell. I'm coming. We'll make it snappy. Sure, Toby. You locked it, all right. Throw those things in there. 
That jalopy won't get us nowhere. Better than walking. If he gets further than this, we'll get him. See that wise guy's face when he grants the stuff. Wait a minute, Pitch. I got some unfinished business. Gee, Toby, what are you going to do? What's it to you? Go on. Well, you know how I feel. I'm sorry. Never mind me. about that. Get going. Okay, Toby. Well, would you take care of my cut for me? I'm only taking a couple of hundred with me. I want to travel light. Okay. Thanks. So long, Toby. <laughs> I got even. No buzz is making a sucker out of me. You're liable to get in trouble. Maybe that bird ain't in season. Yeah? Well, what's Keaton Kim? I don't know, but I ain't waiting for him.
ticket for Phoenix. Yes. Five dollars short. What do you mean? I saw it on a cart up the street. Twelve dollars. Oh, well, that was the vacation rate. But that went off yesterday, the first of the month. It went off yesterday? Yep. Seventeen dollars now. Oh. You better make up your mind. The train's ready to pull out. Yes, sure. Sure. My mistake. Five dollars. I got one of the bills. He's heading for the Phoenix train. The guy with the limit. Let me in, Toby, quick. What are you doing back here? They give it to Buzz last night. And they winged me, too. Now, ain't that too bad. But if that's all you came to tell me, just keep right on going, because I got that over the radio. And in case you don't know it, they got gimpy, too, Mr. Smart Guy. Oh, don't rub it in, Toby. I know I've been wrong. You think you were spotted? No, I've, I've been crawling through the brush all night. Give us a drink, will you? You got it. Give me a break, will you? And forget what happened. I got a good idea. You've had ideas all along, mostly bad. Oh, honest, Toby, I ain't getting smart no more. Please listen, will you? This means a lot to you, too. I'm listening. Well, you know, after last night, it ain't gonna be long before this place gets hot, too. Go uh on. -huh. Well, I'm broke, you know that. But I got a couple of phony passports hit up in San Francisco just in case of a bum break like this. Well, with that 300 bucks you got, we can get out of the country. You can take your 50 grand and lay low for a year or two till the heat's off. And then you're in the dough. You sure about those passports? You ain't giving me the runaround. Oh, gee, Toby, why should I? I need you as much as you need me. It's a deal. And I don't want none of your 50 G's, neither. Yeah, that's all right. I'll take care of that. You know me. Toby, you're a right guy. You know I had you pegged all wrong. Mm -hmm. Ah, forget it. You better get yourself cleaned up. We want to get moving. Yeah, and I want to eat, too.
He'll be fine now. Give him a bone to play with. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Reed. Yes, Doctor? The dog was shot with a 38 caliber revolver. He was hit in the left foreleg at a distance of about 25 feet. Mm -hmm. I see. <clears throat> Will you step over here, please? Now, this is a map of your district. Do you think you can point out approximately where you found the dog? Oh, you've got a nice map. There's LaGrange and Cosmo. And there's the road to my farm. Yes, yes, but uh, the dog. The dog. The dog. Oh, yes, 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 the dog. Well, I found the dog right about, about there. And just a little bit this way, near a fence post, I found the bill. And bills were passed at Stockdale, Burton, and Dover. Mm-hmm. Unless I'm very badly mistaken, we're going to find the answer to it all somewhere in that circle. Clifford, I want at least 500 men. Surround this territory. Keep closing in. Search every house, every barn, every haystack, everywhere. Root them out. And boys, if you have to shoot, shoot to kill. Get going. All right, Mr. Uh, Schaefer. Better use this coat. You can't wear that anymore. Hey, you suppose that mug in there's got any dough? He did have a measly thirty-five bucks. I got it yesterday. Oh, every little bit helps. Yeah, come on, hurry up, will you? And then where are we? Yeah. I guess we gotta knock them off. Now you're talking sense. Give me a gun and I'll get it over with. Who's right? You are, honey. Darling, that gun is still on the couch. You wouldn't be afraid to use it if you had a chance, would you? No. I'm going to try to give you that chance. I guess so. Did you get him? Yes.
<laughs> uh, say, Mr. Reed, you know about that money you took off that Toby? Uh, the good money? Yeah. Well, uh, $35 belongs to us. Only 34, Joe. Why only 34? We owed him a dollar for groceries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I don't think I can get that money back for you. However, when you leave here, if you'll drop over to my office, you'll find quite a bit of new money there for you, which I'm sure will repay your loss. What? Oh, it's all right. I promise you, it's not marked. <laughs> <laughs> Could I get a picture now, please? Thank you. Or if you'd stand right over here on this side of the bed, please. And you on the other side. Yeah, that's fine. Now get your heads just a little closer down to the babies. All right, you look out here now. Right out here. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Your fortitude and courage is an example for us all. And so it gives me great pleasure to bestow upon you the Latham Foundation Medal for heroism and bravery.